Hi, it's Mike Ferry and welcome to Mike Ferry TV. You know, last July and last October, Las Vegas and down in the Fort Lauderdale, Miami area, we did our two superstar retreats. And we did something really fun after the retreats. What I did is I asked each of the attendees, we had nearly 7,000 people register for those two events, which was really exciting. What I did is after the events, I said, instead of me sending out a recap, which I've been doing for years, of what happened at the retreat, I decided to ask all the attendees to send me the 10 best ideas that they learned from the retreat itself. So in July, 1st of August, I said to all the attendees, send me your top 10 list, go through your notes, study them carefully, really look at what we discussed, because we discussed a lot of very important information. Then I want you to tell me what were the 10 best, most important, most impactful things that you learned that you felt you could use. Well, it's interesting because in the first 30 days after the July retreat and the first 30 days after October in Florida, I probably received about 100 of these lists from each group. But here's what's fun. Here we are now in February, and I'm still getting lists sent to me from both July and October, which tells me the most important thing. If you were there going back and researching and studying and rereading and looking at the material, is probably the most important thing you can do. Why? Well, watch this example. I said to one of our coaching clients last week, actually the, the client called and was complaining about our coaching. And that, that happens. I'm, I'm fully aware of that. And I said, so what's the problem? I'm not getting enough out of the coaching calls. I said, well, do you record the calls when you talk to your coach? He said, well, no, I don't. Do you take copious notes? No, I don't. I said, well, guess what? You can't learn something by just listening briefly for 30 minutes and expect to change your life. So I said, let me help you get a lot out of the coaching. I want you to record every call. And then if you record the call, if your call, for example, is on Monday, on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, listen to the coaching call. And I'll bet each day you'll hear something new you didn't hear before. And then I want you to take copious notes in the call and review your notes because you'll keep learning new things you didn't see before. Technically, I said you're going to get 20 coaching calls a month because each call is going to be new and refreshing. Well, he called back a couple days later. Oh my gosh, what a difference. Well, for all of you that went to the retreats, by putting together your top 10 list, by reviewing the information, by looking at it, searching for those nuggets to help yourselves in terms of productivity, all of a sudden, the light goes on, the sky opens up, the sky is blue, the sun is shining, new information is pouring in, and you're becoming smarter. So what I started doing in August and right after October was I started sending out on Monday and Thursday to all the attendees at the two retreats different copies of these top 10 lists. As they came into me, I sent them back out. And I thought it would be fun this week and next week is to take a look at a couple examples of how diverse people perceive the information we give. Now, watch, you and I both know that if I say to you, I want you to prospect, talk to people to build your business, some of you will say, what a great idea. Talk to people, build my business. Some of you will say, I can't believe Mike Ferry wants me to cold call all day long. Now, all I said was, I want you to prospect and talk to people to build your business. How we perceive that, how we hear it, what goes into here many times is totally different than what I said. So what's made these top 10 lists so fascinating to me is the diversity of the ideas that our attendees received, how they're using them, and how they're processing them. So I thought this week I want to share you share with you a great top 10 list. Quite honestly, I've had probably four or 500 of these, and they're all great. And then next week I'm going to read you a second one that is also great, but I want you to so, see the diversity of how people perceive the same idea. Now, why do I say this to you? You're on a listing presentation. The wife says, we really need to sell. And you look at the husband and nod and he goes, well, yeah, as soon as we can, but there's really no hurry. Which one is it? We really need to sell or there's no hurry. See, even a couple sitting together are going to say things different than what you want to hear. Now, the question is, what did you hear? 
I heard the lady, who is the decision maker, saying, we need to get sold. I heard the husband, who's secondary in most of these conversations, don't get mad guys, it's true, saying, well, we don't have to sell it right away. Well, these comments affect pricing. These comments reflect motivation. How are you hearing it? How are you perceiving it? So here's a great top 10 list from our client, Dawn. Listen to these carefully. Very complex, a lot of strong thoughts in each of these top 10. Listen, to number, number one, when we're looking for ways to disrupt our schedule, the universe will always find a way to oblige us. <laughs> Isn't that great? Number one in the Mike Ferry sales system is create a strong time management scheduling system to keep you on track, keep you motivated, keep you enthused, keep you active. First thing she said, when we're looking for ways to disrupt our schedule, universe will always find a way to oblige us. It's true, isn't it? Number two, life is always out of balance and it's up to me to decide which way to tip the scale. I've been saying for years, if you think that you're gonna be a highly productive real estate agent, doing 50, 75, 100 deals a year, if you think you can earn 500,000, 750, a million plus a year, which you could do if you follow my advice, and you don't think that your life will be a, lot of out, a little out of balance, you're nuts, you're crazy, why? Because the commitment, the energy, the time that you put into building a business is gonna take time from something else. Your, your life is gonna be out of balance. Let's just make sure that it's productively out of balance. Number three, our fear of success is really the fear of the responsibility that big success brings to us. Well, I tell you, Dawn really gave this information some thought. What's kind of fun is, <clears throat> when she sent me those, she goes, these are the key points I heard you say. I don't remember saying them. It's how she perceived them. Our fear of success is really the fear of the responsibility that huge success brings us. See, being a failure takes a lot of responsibility. Being a success takes a lot of responsibility. Which way do you want to go? And number four, these are her words, not mine. Life sucks. Get over it and find a way to suck less. Well, that one I have to keep real short because that can go 100 directions, but I think we all know what she's referring to. Life is not always fair. Life is not always fun. Some days are good. Some days are bad. Get over it. The faster you get over it, the faster you move forward. Number five, Everybody has to do things they don't want to do. The difference is I'm going to be paid a lot better for doing the things I don't like to do. All right, let's take a thought. Could you get a job today earning the kind of money you earn doing something else? You're earning $75,000, $100,000, $200,000, dollars $500,000 a year. Is there anybody going to pay you that much money to do that same job? And the answer is no. So. Everybody has things to do they don't want to do. It's called life. But you're going to get paid better for doing those things you don't like to do. Number six, tackling lead follow-up makes prospecting more desirable and more productive. You and I both know that 70% of your business is going to come from your lead follow-up. Not from the prospecting you do originally, but how you follow up with the prospects. And tackling that issue every day is critical. Why? Because see, if you got three lead cards on your desk and you don't call them, the next day you have three lead cards on your desk and you don't call them. And the next day you have three lead cards on your desk and you don't call them. But if you call them and find out they're not motivated to buy or sell, now you have two lead cards, which means you have to prospect again. Number seven, scripts are a way to deliver information more effectively and more efficiently and you won't waste anybody's time, including your own. You know, at the production retreat a few weeks ago in Las Vegas, we had five, and some of you were there, we had five absolutely great superstar agents make live listing presentations on stage to a seller. And each time we finished, everybody jumped up, there was 2,100 people there, gave them a standing ovation. And what we looked at was their use of the scripts. And they followed the scripts. Each seller had a different situation, each circumstance was different, but the scripts brought them together to get a contract signed. Number eight, listen to this, bad things happen. Bad things happen to all types of people. It's no excuse to quit. You know, you get hung up on the phone, a listing expires, a deal falls apart, 
a buyer gets mad and walks out on you, a seller asks you to cut the commission and demands it. These are things we don't like to see happen in real estate, but these are things that happen in real estate. Bad things happen to good people. It doesn't give you a reason to quit. Number nine, listen, I'm gonna read it the way she said it. Study, 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 study your scripts. Study the objections you receive, study the answers, and study your presentation daily. This will breathe confidence in when you know what to say and when to say it. Most important part of selling, knowing what to say and knowing when to say it, knowing how to respond. That's why at the production retreat in January, the entire three days on how to make a great presentation. By the way, for any of our Northeastern friends, any of our great Canadian friends, anybody from the GTA, coming up the end of April, I'm doing a three-day mini retreat in Toronto, as I do every year for you folks, and I'm gonna be covering how to make a great listing presentation, how to become a great presenter, how to become the best of the best. I'm gonna give you all the tips that I know on how to become a great presenter. You probably wanna be there. And number, number 10 on her list, mindset and belief in yourself. If you don't believe you can do it, guess what? You're not gonna do it. But show up physically and your mind will always follow. Isn't that a great thought? Show up physically and your mind will always follow. If we can get you into the circumstance of talking to people, if we can get you into the circumstance of sitting with buyers and sellers, your brain is gonna start producing something to come out of your mouth to make you succeed. Let's use the ideas that we have available to you to make that happen. I'm looking forward to next week and I wanna give you another top 10 list but show you a completely different perception from what this great list from Dawn showed us today. Have a great week.